Continuing our look at some of the Wizards DX toys, I think we need to review something that's waited a long time for its turn. Something that's been waiting in the wings for so long, I can hardly believe I haven't gotten around to it. Yep, today, it's the Drago Timer. What? Don't give me that. The sword waited this long, it can wait longer. Most writers these days get a big mid-season upgrade to boost toy sales, I, I mean, uh, to, to, to boost interest in the show's plot. Yes, the plot. Uh, anyway. For Wizard, it's the DX Drago Timer. Design-wise, it's pretty straightforward. The familiar gold-trimmed hand is gripping on a fairly elaborate stopwatch. Unlike the belt, the chrome is kept to a minimum, forming the outside of the watch, while everything else is painted on. Under the translucent dial is a sticker with four colored zones for flame, water, hurricane, and land. Hmm, one short of calling Captain Planet. Oh well. Extending off the hand is a guard painted in silver, ending on a setting of a wizard ring, though instead of a gemstone inside, the dragon is erupting from it, which looks really cool. There's some durability to this as well. The dragon is cast in a soft plastic, so it's much harder to damage or accidentally knock off. And there's a double hinge between the wrist and the hand portion of the device, so a child wearing it can have some room to still move their hand. Intelligent designing. I like that. Too bad it doesn't work on my grown-up hand. Bandai seems to know there's adult collectors for this stuff, though, as the last notch of both straps do fit me, even if it is a bit snug. Even so, for the sake of keeping this thing still and in frame, it'll be working off my arm for this review. Naturally, it has to be on first. Everything in this toy line roars at me. Though we did get a really nice effect with the dragon in the handguard, the light goes through it really nicely. So there's really only two things to do here, turn the dial or hit the thumb to activate the toy. Uh oh, sorry, it's not ready. First, we have to turn the dial, which might be where you hit the toy's big drawback. That sound like a dying Furby? That's a really loud wind-up motor inside that controls how fast the dial rotates around. The audio is going to be louder, no worry there. It's just not avoidable, that's all. Alright, so let's prime this thing. It only activates when the dial is turned all the way. For the first demo, we're going to go through it the normal way and activate each at the right time so you'll hear all the sounds. Sit at. Stop. At this point, I'd hit the button again and activate dragon formation, but there's other sounds depending on how many dragons you activate, including the first press. So you can hear the differences more clearly, I'm going to edit all the results together, starting with one and ending with four. Attack gets bigger and bigger the more you activate. I also love how responsive the prism light is in the dragon, changing to match each section of the dial and rotating colors during final time. And to get the questions out of the way, no, it only goes as high as four, even if you hit the button while it's still in the red, since technically the first press is in the red. 
That said, Flame Dragon's noise is in here if you're fast enough. It doesn't change anything though, it's just a bonus. There's one more function for this toy. In this situation, we're going to need the ride bucket. You might have noticed the way this is designed, it has to be on your right hand, and there's a reason. Bandai doesn't like lefties. Actually, it's because we're going to need this on the spell side of the driver, as both it and the Drago timer are going to start flipping out when they get near each other. First, enter final time, then scan it into the belt. Number of activations doesn't matter. lot of noises going on, isn't there? That's Wizard's all dragon form, which sounds pretty intense if it were just easier to tell what was going on. Let's try cutting the power and seeing if we can't cut through some of that noise. Final time! While we're at it, let's try some other toys with this thing. Yeah, pretty much the same. And I'm betting the same is true for the sword gun. Notice the Drago timer really doesn't care what RF signal it is. It's not picky at all. Like, really not picky. Well, that was informative, yet repetitive. And that's the DX Drago Timer. Some simple functions, but good variety to its use. It does quite a bit for an upgrade toy. Plus, I like how it utilizes the belt scanning gimmick. It feels like it's still part of the character's theme and abilities without standing on its own too much like some upgrade items can. I'd call it a worthy addition to a wizard collection, especially if you have a thing for flashing multicolored dragons. I, I kind of do.